Welcome back to the channel, I'm Brad Lone Wolf, and today you're joining me in my garden, and we're going to be looking today at the various different types of stoves on the market, that being the type of fuel that they use, and the advantages and disadvantages of each one. Now, I'm in my garden, but I'm not going to be lighting any of these stoves, I'm just going to be going through the pros and the cons of each type. Full disclosure, um, I haven't got all of the stoves that I'm going to be talking about actually on me, so I have got a couple of printouts um, just to represent what I'm talking about. So, the type of stoves that I'm going to be talking about today are wood-fired, alcohol-fired, gas-fired and multi-fuel stoves. So this kind of leads on from last week where I was doing the, the wood burning stove and because of that um, I will actually start off with that and I know I've already been through the pros and the cons of a wood burning stove but I'll go through them again uh, just so that uh, we're all, uh, all aware. So this, that's the Thomason uh, wood burning stove. I'm not going to set it up you saw me set it up last week so um you already know what it looks like you already know how easy it goes together um the pros of it and i've already again i've already been through the pros this is just to keep a little bit of consistency the pros are that it's flat pack um and fits down really nice and small the downside is that unless you've got either wood or one of them burners, a Trangia burner, realistically it's not that useful a stove. So unless you're in woodlands, that's really the best, that's really the the advantage and the disadvantage is that you need to be in woodland for a wood burning stove to work like I say unless you plan on using an alcohol stove or a Trangia stove or a Trangia burner sorry not the stove just the burner right with that we'll move on conveniently enough to alcohol burning stoves So, as many of you know, and this is the first first example of a stove that I don't actually have in my equipment. But, as many of you know, you can actually make your own alcohol burning stoves. And I have made several in the past and a couple of them are homemade and a couple of them are well, a couple of the ones that you see there are also actually professionally made um, so the Trangia stove the actual Trangia stove which is that picture there the advantage of it there are no moving parts well, I say there's no moving parts. There's precisely one moving part in the Trangier. And it's on the burner. And it's that part there. It's the rivet for the simmer ring. That's it. In terms of reliability, 
one of the most reliable stoves on market if not the most reliable stove on the market because it has precisely one moving part and if that moving part breaks there's not really much that can stop you from cooking simple operation um, it's all contained and we're talking about the Trangia stove here the Trangia 27 that I've got in this case completely contained with its own windshield its own stand its own burner a couple of pots and usually a frying pan as well some people leave the frying pan behind though that's entirely up to you whether you do that or not disadvantages however it's bulky the sheer size of the thing is when you compare it to other stoves you really do start to realize quite how bulky it is in comparison and how much space it takes up in your in your rucksack and for the pros of being simple to operate being sturdy being for want of a better word safe its cons it does make up for it with its cons as well that being said however as i've already mentioned people can and do make their own alcohol fired stoves or meth fired stoves which is represented in this case both by that the foster's can and my own uh, toucan stove there Notwithstanding the fact that you can make a stove a lot, lot smaller and a lot lighter than the Trangia stoves um, with your own homemade stove, it still has the disadvantage in the amount of time it takes to boil or cook anything. So all of these stoves that you see here, be it, be it the Trangia, be it the homemade stove, be it whatever, the boil time for a litre of water is about 15 minutes. So that is one massive, massive con of an alcohol-fired stove. You can increase the efficiency and the boil time by doing little tricks. Um, some people will decrease the amount of water that they're boiling, which is obviously one way of doing it. Some people semi-pressurise the, the stove, which is what you see here. If you look on here, you've got a little thumbtack. And you seal that up, kind of semi-pressurises it so that the alcohol can only come out one way preheat it and makes it a little bit more efficient you have obviously seen a couple of weeks ago where i made my own alcohol stove and um preheating the fuel actually does increase the the burn time not by much but it does i mean it reminds me i've got to go back and finish that stove off as best I can that's by the by so that's alcohol stoves or meth fired stoves like I say the pros of them there tends to be a minimum of moving parts they tend to be extremely reliable but their downside overall their downside is the cook time or the boil time boil water boiling water time in terms of the trans here it's also the bulk so next i'm going to move on i'm going to look we're going to look at um gas stoves and i'll go through the pros and the cons of each of the gas stoves okay so this is the range of gas stoves that i've got and as you can see they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes now the first thing to 
really talk about is the gas cartridge sizes so you can get ones that are this size this size but you can also get ones that are smaller i haven't got one of them but you can get ones that are smaller than this as well obviously the bigger the gas cartridge the longer it's going to last and that's its advantage the disadvantage is obviously it's bulkier and um it weighs more as well so again pros and cons the other universal discount that uh, discount the other universal disadvantage to gas uh, gas stoves and this actually goes for alcohol stoves as well I didn't mention this the colder the climate and the higher the altitude the less efficient gas tends to be particularly if the cartridge gets cold now if the cartridge gets cold gas becomes more dense and it doesn't flow as well so you don't get the same gas going through and it takes longer to boil water or cook something so that's a universal disadvantage to both meth fired or alcohol fired stoves and gas fired stoves the advantage with gas fired stoves though are their extreme size and their their efficiency and the boil time with the exception of the jet boil these two here so this one and this one have a boil time between three and five minutes for a liter of water the jet boil on the other hand has a boil time of 90 seconds now with that there is an asterisk by that the jet boil only holds half a liter of water so and it can only hold half a liter of water unless you get the specific pot that's designed to go on the jet boil so the like I say, the universal advantage to gas-fired stoves is the efficiency and the quickness in boiling uh, of a litre of water. I've already mentioned the size, and you can see that that one, being the smallest one that I have, fits quite nicely in the, side, in the palm of my hand. Once you put the stabilizing fins out, you can see it will support will support pot quite nicely. However, and again, I'll mention this, I'm not going to screw this on all the way. Again, I've mentioned it before. Small as they are, they do stack high. And we'll see the higher something is, the higher the center of gravity, the more potential it's more potential it's got a falling over. And with gas, obviously it's going to stay lit until you switch the gas supply off. So again, something to be aware of, particularly with these type of stoves they are smaller they are lighter but because they directly fit on top it raises the center of gravity so it's just something to be aware of which is why when it comes to gas stoves i prefer this type Again, I've already mentioned these. So the control, the control still sits on top of the gas can, but the pipe means that the stove itself can be away from the gas canister, which lowers the center of gravity again, making it a lot more stable. 
The other advantage of a stove like this is this pipe here that wraps around the burner itself. That is, well, I suppose the best way of describing it is it's a pre-warmer. Um, actually warms any of the gas that's coming out of the cylinder that's chilled down. So it makes it a little bit more efficient. As I say, uh, I prefer this setup just because of the stability issues that go with it. The other advantage to this one is with the controls being here, you're less likely to burn your hand. So that's, that's the Primus, that's the low center of gravity one. The last gas, last example of gas stove that I have here is the jet boil. Now, the jet boil specific canisters actually fit inside the jet boil itself. The jet boil, the mug, mug part itself can come off. What jet boil have been doing recently has been putting these one of these jet boil ring into they're set up so you can actually put a normal pot on the on the stand on the actual stove now when you do that obviously it does lose its efficiency so it goes from 90 seconds of boiling half a liter of water to about five minutes uh, because it loses like i say the efficiency the efficiency, speaking of the efficiency within the jet boil, this heat exchange that uh, really makes the, the jet boil as efficient and as quick as it is. But again, even with even with that advantage, even with the heat exchange advantage. It's still, if you go to high, higher altitude and colder temperatures, this will lose efficiency. You may ask, you may have seen me take that out, and you might be asking what that's for. It's actually a stabiliser. Now, it will fit jet boil canisters. It will also fit standard canisters as well, but it's designed more or less for jet boil canisters. does negate the stacking high. Um, issue the stacking high con but I have yet to see a stabilizer uh, on sale by itself so I've only ever seen them in sale for sale in the jet boils okay so that's an overview of gas stoves I'll move on to second let's well, say the second to last it's going to be the last one in common use but there is another type of uh, stove that I want to talk about as well so I'll be back in a second with the second to last one okay so again with this stove I don't actually have uh, an example uh, in my equipment to show you um, the reason being is I've never really needed one uh, I don't I don't go to any places that really warrant it and they are expensive to run now this is the example I've got here one of the most expensive on the market um, it's also usually rated as one of the best as well now i have used one of these in the past they are good they are in fact they're better than good they are fantastic they will run off of pretty much any liquid fuel you can think of um i did have a colleague when i worked in cotswold outdoors who ran one of these off of vodka believe it or not high grade vodka um, apparently it completely suited up the jet but it ran with that um, as I say they do 
a lot of these stoves they can run off of well they're multi-fuel so they're designed to run off of any liquid fuel that you can think of the advantage to that is you're very 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 unlikely to not be able to run it the other advantage is because these are pressurized stoves and you actually do have to pressurize them to use them properly they can be used at any altitude and any any weather which is why you quite often see them in documentary not just not just the msr dragonfly but petrol stoves or multi-fuel stoves being used everywhere in the world their disadvantage however is they require a lot of maintenance um, and if you're switching between light fuel and heavy fuel you also need to swap out a valve within the stove itself so if you're going somewhere very remote very high or very cold they're absolutely ideal but their maintenance is high unlike the other two types of stoves that i showed you obviously the mess fired stoves or the alcohol fired stoves requires little to no maintenance other than maybe a bit of a clean out every now and then and the, ga the gas stoves might require might require a little bit of maintenance on the the rubber gaskets that's about it whereas a petrol stove or a multi-fuel stove like this it does require a lot of maintenance but the ability to use any fuel anywhere more than makes up for it they also tend to be quite bulky in comparison to gas stoves but that is because mainly because of how they are operated how they work um, obviously you've got to imagine that you've got not only have you got to pressurize the fuel you've got to vaporize the fuel as well for it to burn efficiently now again there are little tricks and tips that you can get to getting these stoves burning and working efficiently um, or as efficiently as possible but that's something that if you get one of these you have to you have to learn that um, yourself and I'm sure there's videos on YouTube that will show you how to do it in terms of boiling water they kind of sit about the midway point between gas stoves and alcohol stoves they're usually about four to five minutes again depending on the fuel that you use if you're using lighter grade fuel such as uh, petrol naphtha uh, there's another one that I can't think of right now it tends to be quicker if you're using the heavier fuel such as kerosene or diesel it takes a little bit longer so in terms of one of these stoves as I say if you're going somewhere remote somewhere cold somewhere high that is the ideal place for one of these doesn't mean you can't use them in the UK you absolutely can if you can afford to top the if you can afford to fill the fuel bottle up of course so which at the moment for a liter of petrol is one pound 51 mind you saying that in this stove that'll probably last you three days unlike in a car but that's by the by so that's uh, the that's the multi-fuel stoves it's one other type of stove that I want to talk about um, and it's a little bit of an unusual one this one because it's not really a stove I'll come on to that now and talk about it so this is the last type that I want to talk about now some people in the military will know exactly what these are um, they would have seen them they would have used them now i only have the mug version but they did make a proper pot version uh, a long time ago and i will be honest i have not seen these in a very long time 
Uh, I know the military still uses them, but I've never seen one in civilian use for a very, very long time. What this is, is this is a flameless stove kit. So the idea is, you open up this pack, and in there there's a little pouch. You take that pouch, you knock over your cup, you take the metal portion out, now it does look small and it is rather small, you put that pouch in there with a little bit of water, which the mug does come with, there's a certain amount of water you got put in there, put that on top, put the lid on top, close it down, takes about seven or eight minutes and you've got a freshly brewed uh, cup of tea or whatever and that's just for the mug version the pot version obviously you can do a full meal or a full boil in the bag meal in it the advantage to these ones it's the ultimate in stealth camping because you don't leave any fire scars you don't leave any trace that you've cooked at all. The disadvantage, however, I've already mentioned it, getting hold of them, them sachets and getting hold of the pots now, because I haven't seen them in years. The, the military, and particularly the American military, still use something similar to cook their meals uses a similar sort of pouch to cook their meals if you can get hold of them and you want to do stealth camping they are fantastic the other disadvantage however is they do produce quite a lot of waste so although you're not leaving any any mark that you were there you do have to take quite a lot out um, and yes, they do have to be packed in packaging, or plastic wrapping like that, because although, they, although they're meant to react with water, the amount of moisture in the air can also make them react as well. So they have to be sealed up co completely. So that's an overview of the different types of stoves that you can get on the market. I hope that gives you an idea of the type of stove that you want and the best ones for you and the best type of stove for yourself. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.